Welcome to the uh, Portage uh, Mayoral Forum. Welcome candidates, incumbents, Mayor Bill Tierney, Alderman Rick Dodd. Well, thanks to all of you who took time out to, uh, to attend and to all those watching on cable access from home, thanks to you as well. Thank you, Marianne, for co-sponsoring this forum. I'm Kerry Lechner, editor of the 40 David Register. We're here to hear from uh, the two men who want to represent the city of Portage as its top elected official for the next three years. Why should voters retain Mr. Tierney, or why should they fire him and hire Mr. Dodd for this job? This evening, both men have the opportunity to make their case two weeks before the April 5th election. We'll talk about some of the top issues and concerns that citizens have raised and that have been raised by the candidates themselves in the performance of their duties as mayor and alderman. It is customary in such forums to begin with candidates making opening statements and then to answer questions from a moderator with a set amount of time for each and then to conclude with closing statements. We could do that. Uh, but I'd like this to be more of a discussion between the two of you, uh, meaning that I will introduce a topic with a question. I'll ask one of you to go first, and then the other uh, can respond. <coughs> State your position, explain how you differ if that's the case from your opponent, and feel free to ask him a question of your own. It's my job to keep the discussion focused and uh, not let things get out of hand. I'm confident that won't be a problem since you're both reasonable and civic men and public servants. So, would you like to make opening statements or would you like to uh, wait till the end to make closing statements or would you like to do both? I thought it was closing. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's begin with this and it's a, it's a three part question. How would you describe the job? What are the main responsibilities and duty of the mayor of Portage? And part two, what can the mayor do to make life better for residents here? Part three, what is the biggest misconception that you think the voting public has about what the mayor can and cannot do? Why don't we start with you, uh, Mr. Tierney? <coughs> well, thank you. I think you nailed that first question and you answered it in your opening in the sense of represent the city. I think that's probably my job as the mayor or whoever the mayor is, is, is to represent the city in the best possible way that you can. That is, businesses would come and look at Portage, as existing businesses would want to talk about things in Portage, as citizens would have questions about how things are in Portage, as potential newcomers would have questions about Portage. It's my job to paint Portage in the most positive light that you possibly can. I've said this unequivocally on numerous occasions that, that I um, am an elected official, I'm a part-time mayor, and I'm not a professional administrative person in the sense of with a background in that, that we have staff that has delegated jobs. Part of my duties would be also to make sure that they're doing their job. Um, um, I think that as far as some of the misconceptions when it comes to the job of the mayor, is people think that just because the mayor wants something from the other elected officials, that's going to happen. In reality, it's been rather unusual that in the last two council meetings, I've actually had an opportunity to vote. And that doesn't happen very often. Um, it's normally a separation of duties. Chief Executive Branch, the chair that I sit in currently, and that Mr. Dodd is seeking. The Legislative Branch, where Rick currently sits. And then of course, we actually even have a municipal court. So in the sense, we're very similar to the uh, federal breakdown with those three branches right there. So again, the representation of the city the best I possibly can, and the misconception being that oftentimes people just think that uh, a flick of a finger and it can happen. I wish it was the case. Uh, one of my big jobs, of course, is to lobby those alders with you know how I feel and hopefully maybe give them some guidance, uh, give them some insight. But when it's all said and done, um, I have a responsibility to whatever they decide is a proper legislation to make sure that's carried through. Now I have, this position has veto authority. Um, I've used it once I recall for sure in this, in this term, but I don't use that lightly. 
Um, I have to have a very good conviction in my own mind as to why I don't feel whatever the positive action was, was actually counterproductive as far as I was concerned in the city's case. Thank you. Mr. Dodd. Uh, I am going to agree somewhat with that in that the, the mayor of the city really has very little power as far as the authority goes of what gets done. What they do have the authority to do is to coach the, the people that perform the job and, and make sure that they understand what their functions really are. Um, the mayor does not have, for the most part, voting rights. Mayor only has a veto right if he so desires to use it. And there are very few times that I've been sitting here for 12 years that the veto right has actually come into play. Um, the mayor should be the buck stops here person when there are disagreements within departments, within the council, and within the citizens themselves. One thing I think the mayor's responsibility is to is to do good two-way communications with all of the people within the city, which includes the council, which includes the elected officials council, which includes the uh, paid positions downstairs, and also includes all the service people and the citizens of Portage. Um, that is a very important piece that I believe is somewhat lacking and has been lacking for a while in that we do not communicate, and I'm going to say we, because as a council, I communicate somewhat, but it's only with the district that I reside in and that I represent. As the mayor, I have to represent the whole city, and I would need to get input from the whole city and the citizens of the city. Uh, do I believe that I have the best ideas for the city of Portage? Sometimes yes, but I would say in the majority of times, I believe the citizens actually have some better ideas than I have, and we should start listening to our citizens to understand <coughs> what they want, where they want to go, and provide a vision of where they want the city to go. So from that standpoint, um, the mayor has some very good positions as far as coaching individuals, moving them along, keeping them going in the right direction based on the vision that the citizens want to do. When you say coaching, are you talking about city staff? Are you talking about council I'm talking members? Council, I'm talking city staff, and <coughs> any of the other people that need to be able to do if we develop a vision of where we want Portage to go, of keeping them to that task, keeping them going on that task. So yeah, some of it, the majority of it probably is within the city staff and making sure that they get along. I don't care if they're the best of friends, but when they're in City Hall, they are working together. There's no arguments between them and that everybody understands exactly what their jobs are. Has, has that been an issue to your knowledge? Uh, has been in the past, not the recent past, but it has been an issue that there has been some very good turmoil that has happened down okay. in the employees. Okay. Did you want to talk about the the misconceptions that people might have about the mayor's position, or do you think you covered that? I think I pretty much covered that. Okay, good, yeah. good. The job of mayor in Portage is nonpartisan, in so much that uh, uh, you're not representing a political party. Yet that doesn't mean politics aren't involved in, in terms of having supporters and detractors and all the dynamics that are involved with that. In your view, how much does politics play a part in the job of mayor, and how do you characterize the politics, and, and how do you deal with that? And why don't you go first, Mr. Dodd? Well, I, I think for the good of the city that a nonpartisan mayor is probably the best person or the best party lines to have. Um, the detractors are, there's always people with their opinions. I'm not going to say they're down party lines of Republican Democrats because I don't think they are, but they're more down the lines of I would like to see this or I would like to see that. And some good examples of that was pretty polarized last Thursday night um, in the discussion that happened over the sidewalks and the, the release of the contract for the sidewalks. Um, polarized discussion is sometimes very good. It's not to say that people don't 
want to do what's right, their feeling is they're doing what's right, and the opposite side is feeling they're doing what's right. So polarized discussions and disagreements, and, or if you want to call them detractors if you want, are very good for the city, and they're very good for the discussion standpoint of that. And it's actually democracy at its finest because there are different views to everything. I once had somebody said, do you guys ever disagree? Because they kept watching council meetings and every vote came out nine to nothing as in favor of. And I said, the rationale for some of that is because a lot of that information gets get some vetted out in the committee meetings. So by the time it gets to council, we've already talked about it two or three times and for maybe a number of months. So don't have many nine nothing votes on. There have not been many nine, but there are still a lot of nine nothing votes. But and uh, uh, Mr. Turney, would you like to address that issue of politics? And Certainly, but I'd be more than happy to. You know, I, I'm old enough to remember back when you decided to run for elected office that in many cases, your, your parents were proud of you. I'm not too sure it's the case anymore if you watch what's going on in this country nowadays. That's why I push very hard that I'm not a politician. I'm an elected official. I'm proud to be an elected official. Um, again, we are nonpartisan. Um, I don't have any, outside this particular role as mayor, I have no particular allegiance to either party. I've always believed in what the right idea is. That can come from anybody. Um, as far as the tractors, that, that makes us whole and good, and we should be willing to listen to that. Um, I take with pride the fact that the people tell me that I call people back, anybody, everybody, that former elected officials didn't do. They would avoid that confrontation. Now, I don't like confrontation more than anybody else does. But the bottom line is, I have a responsibility to answer to every citizen, and that's my job to do that. So while that can be uncomfortable, I've always said I get a lot more done with honey than I can with vinegar, but um, I will sit down and talk to people, and hopefully we'll come to some resolve uh, and some sort of discourse that meets at least a middle line. Um, that's all we can ask for. You know, we truly are a democracy. We really truly a full democracy. Everybody would have a vote every time. Well, that's, I hate to use the word impossible, but very probable. So you as an elected official have to do what you feel is in the best interest of the citizens that you represent. Well, talk to, your, talk to the citizens, absolutely, but at a certain point, you've got to basically take a stand and make that decision. And then, not worry about the elect, next election. I said when I, was, when I was elected three years ago as your mayor, I wasn't running for the next term. That did not mean I wasn't going to run for re-election. That just meant I wasn't going to make false promises or try and tell you one thing and you something else to make everybody happy. It doesn't work very well that way. Uh, Mr. Dodd, um, you mentioned this um, a moment ago, and it's one of the questions I had about you recusing yourself from voting at Thursday night's Common Council meeting on the River Street sidewalk issue saying that it was a conflict of interest because of family considerations or family connections to the neighborhood, resulting in a 4-4 tie, which gave the mayor the uh, chance to vote, which he did in favor of. Uh, and uh, happens rarely, and you mentioned this happened a couple of times in the last, you know, the last couple of months, uh, came up in that uh, parking agreement with the county in, in February. Um, so, Mr. Dodd, can you tell us more about your decision to recuse yourself on that particular event, <coughs> and, uh, on that particular vote, and, and why it was the right thing for the people of Portage? Yeah, I think the answer um, is, is pretty simple. We're elected to make decisions for the betterment of the city. Uh, if an issue arises that presents conflict of interest, um, whether it's perceived or real conflict, the elected officials should decide not to vote and recuse themselves from voting and all discussions on the thing. I have three family members that live in the impacted area, and I did not feel comfortable in making a decision on this matter um, because of those people. Um, when I was in the committee last year when we started looking at this River Street sidewalk project or River Street reconstruction project. I was fully committed to discussion on that, um, made discussions, made recommendations on which way I think we should go as part of municipal services. It was only until later this year um, 
that the conflict of interest kind of was came up and I, I asked for an opinion on it from city attorney. He gave me about a three page letter which had a lot of legalese and attorney talk in it. Um, the end of the day he said, you probably by the letter of the law do not have a true conflict of interest. But he said the perceived conflict of interest because I have mother, sister, and mother-in-law living on that street, that your perceived conflict of interest with that is gonna be just that. And if you vote for it, you're gonna say, there's somebody who's gonna come along at a later date that says, well, you did it for them, why aren't you gonna do it for me? And I didn't feel I could actually do that in a fair method. To me, it was about my integrity of what I needed to do as an elected official. So if a conflict of interest comes up, in the future, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to ask for a ruling from the city attorney, and I'm going to abide by that ruling of what he said. Uh, I, I do apologize for the vote the way it came up, but I, I also believe that my integrity was more at stake for me. If I win this, it's definitely. If I don't win this, it's still sitting in that chair over there. I need to do what's right for myself, and I need to do what's right for the city. And I don't want somebody coming back at a later date saying, you had a conflict of interest, you should not have voted on this item. What do you mean when you say you apologize for the way the vote came out? Well, because it came out as a tie. You know, and, and people elect you to make a decision. People elect you to say yay or nay to the vote when it comes up. This, this probably in my 12 years is the first time I ever recused myself from discussing it at all at a council chamber. In the March, municipal services meeting when the vote came up on basically when the vote came up on this part of the segment of the project I also recused myself from discussion and voting on that part so I have been consistent in what I've been doing once we realized that there was a conflict of interest brewing in the background so to be clear you only recused yourself from the the sidewalk portion of, of that project? And the voting? But because, yeah, be, but because the way the resolution was originally written, it was for the entire project. It was for the sidewalks, the streets, all three phases. And it was either an up or down vote on it the whole thing? It was either an up or down vote. So at the beginning of that, I immediately recused myself from discussion of that. There was a resolution at a later date that then broke out the, the River Street from River to Summit and then from Summit to County Trunk Hill. So that, there was two votes on that, but before that I actually recused myself or I may have, you know, gotten in the way of myself, so to speak. All right, thanks. Mr. Kearney, your response and your thoughts on this issue. Well, again, I think Rick said it somewhat appropriately in, in the sense that a conflict of interest is what you perceive yourself in many cases. Uh, as you read the letter that Jesse did give to myself and all the council members, um, after you read three pages, it really comes down to what you yourself feel as much perception in your own mind is. And I can have a different feeling than the person. So I, so I applaud Rick if he in fact felt that he had a conflict to stand back. The unfortunate part of this here, and I think he mentioned it, is that he was part of those discussions way back when the whole process started. That truly, if you're truly gonna follow the letter of law, and if you feel you have a conflict of interest on an issue, you should recuse yourself from the very beginning. Now again, th there's some leeway here in the sense you didn't get that ruling until late in the matter, but, but in fact, if you have the situation with family living there, they didn't just move in there three months ago, they were there when this whole process started. Um, but quite honestly, I'm glad it worked out the way it did, in fact, I got a chance to vote, because I'll be the first one to say that I'm the biggest advocate for safe sidewalk as anyone in the city of Portage. So I took a lot of pride in the fact that I made that vote. Uh, well, lines seem to be drawn clearly on this issue, on the sidewalk debate. Um, four council members take the position that it's unnecessary, unwanted, and even a poor use of city resources. While four others say it's important for the city to uh, adhere to its overall sidewalks policy. Can you please summarize your position on this, and, and, and is this an isolated issue of disagreement among the council, or are there other areas of, of strong contention? I guess go first this time? Sure. Wonderful. Um, I think it's important to go back to, again, the sense that the sidewalk policy that, in fact, the Common Council voted in resolution form was that 
as was addressed in the building project on River Street. And as I was quoted in the publication, um, where we get ourselves in a lot of troubles, we are inconsistent. So we have a policy, um, and, and there, are, there are reasons why you, in fact, can go outside that policy, but none of those were present to me as we looked at this makeup of River Street. So sidewalk policies have been debated here since I was in the council back in the 90s. And it seems like whenever a certain majority changes here, that they want to revisit that particular policy. So if I'm out there as a citizen, I'm not quite sure what's going on. My biggest point on sidewalk policies is that I don't want a sidewalk to nowhere. And that's what, in fact, happened on River Street. We went from Rivers, <coughs> from Wisconsin, <coughs> excuse me, to Summit, dirty sidewalk, and then green space, sidewalk, green space. That's an inconsistency. So I think we have a responsibility to the citizens to know what they're looking at, not only today, but in the future. As far as are there other areas of contention, now, my crystal ball is not that clear. Something has developed Thursday night that I'm not aware of. But again, I would rather have good debate and a 5 4 vote than just a 9 nothing for the fact that nobody has a whole work and nobody cares. So, discussion, rational decision making, and then when it's all said and done, move on with it. Probably my biggest disappointment compared to when I was here years ago is that we seem to fester and we don't let go of issues that have been voted on and move on. If you've got a chance on the losing end this time, that's okay. You might win the next one. And all. So you've done your best, you've represented your citizens, move on. Well, I uh, remind you that, it, or encourage you rather, to uh, you know interact with one another too and have, ask questions of each other if you, if you so choose. Um, how about you, Mr. Duff? Anything more on that topic, or? Yeah, I would say that um, if I'm being asked if I'm in favor of sidewalks in the city, the answer is yes and no. <laughs> I think there are some places that sidewalks are definitely required, but the, the sidewalk policy has three deviations in it that allow you not to put sidewalks in if they exist. So to say cut and dry that we're gonna put sidewalks in every street within the city, I think that's a bit ambitious and I'm not sure it's actually realistic. There are places within the city that I don't think without being a little bit creative that we can actually get sidewalks in there. And one of the deviations or one of the things is if the current zoning that was put in at the time the houses were built don't allow for sidewalks, that's a reason for not putting them in. So in a lot of part of the new part of the, sorry, the older part of the city, they were built under 40 year old, 50 year old right of ways. Um, and some of them just strictly don't have the room to put them in. Summit Street is a good example of that. It doesn't have the right of way and there's a couple places there that are gonna be two to three feet away from a person's garage and the sidewalk's gonna be right on top of their garage. That a good thing to do? I don't know, but I think every one of these sidewalks that we put in, unless it's in a new portion of the city that has the proper setbacks, we probably are going to debate this going forward. Uh, it bothered me last Thursday night. I couldn't say anything because I recused myself, but it bothered me when all of the negative, not the negatives, but the people were against sidewalks. Never once brought up any of these deviations as part of their arguments. There's three deviations that are there. Part one of them that's pretty pretty common is the setback limits that are in the, within there. Another one is that industrial parks are excluded from there if so desired. Those never came up. It was always the fact that we didn't have the money to do this and we should spend the money elsewhere. $88,000, which was the cost of what they were talking about, isn't going to go very far anywhere in any project. It might get a few alleys repaved, but as far as a street project goes, it's not going to go far at all. You might get a quarter of a block done. So this overall project is what? Something like 1.2 million? 1.2 million, but the part that we were discussing that came out of 404 Tie was $139,000 from River Street to County Trunco. What, what's the uh, the funding breakdown on that on the whole project? Basically 1.2 million. How much of that is, is that all city money? So 
No, there's also, I think it was $88,000 that was city money for the last part and the rest of it was assessed out of $139,000 roughly. So there's roughly a little over about $50,000 that is, would be assessed back on the, on the project. Now, when you get into the street project, every sewer ladder, every water main is also assessed back to the residents. So the only part that I'm talking about that get, was contentious was from Summit Street up to County Trunco on River Street. Everything else pretty much went through as, uh, as expected, but it pretty much had an 8-0 vote. So the majority of that project, the majority of the 1.2 million was not contested at all. All right, very good. Anything more? Nope. All right. 